Welcome today to this message. You know, there are lots of subjects that affect all of us. There are a few that, accept, that just affect some of us. But one of the subjects that affects all of us is the subject of love. Everybody wants to be loved. In every survey that is conducted of the needs of the human being, love is one of the key elements. People need to be loved. And so it's not surprising that when you look around in the world, you find that love appears on almost every sphere of our being. You turn up the newspapers and you hear stories about love. You read magazines and the stories of people's lives and they're often about love. You look at novels and they are to do with love. You turn on the radio and listen to pop music and we're told that over 80% of pop songs are to do with love. Love is such an important subject. But so often, when you hear stories about love, or you read some of these incidents, or you listen to some of the songs, actually what's being spoken about is not real love at all. It's much more to do with my emotions, or a lust, or a desire, than real love. So where can we turn to, to find out what real love is? The Apostle John was known as the Apostle of Love. And of all the books in the Bible that speak about love, and many do, perhaps his first letter is one that speaks more about love than any other. And in the middle of chapter 4, this is what John says. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. And here's our key verse for today. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Here's John saying, this is love. He's describing for us what true love really is. So what does he tell us? What can we learn about true love from these verses and this verse in particular? Well, the surprising thing is that before John tells us what love is, he starts by telling us what love is not. This is love, not that we loved God. That's surprising really, because as I've said, John was known as the apostle of of love. As a young man, he was impetuous, he was proud, he came from a business family, but it appears from the Bible that he was quite self-centered, and uh, often he seemed to lose his cool with others around him. But one day he came face to face with the Lord Jesus. There on the beach, Jesus was walking and came upon John and his brothers, and Jesus called John to himself and said, follow me. Something about Jesus attracted John. I suppose at first we wouldn't say it's love, but something gripped John as he uh, was called by the Lord Jesus. And he left his nets, he left his business, and along with others began to follow the Lord Jesus. Wonderful expression of love. And that interest, that affection over the months, over the years, turned to deep love. There's an old hymn that says, My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine, for thee all the pleasures of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Saviour out there, if ever I loved you, Lord Jesus, it's now. And John could speak like that. He'd come to love the Lord Jesus. And whatever you say about the disciples, you have to say that they loved Jesus. John's brother, James, was put to death by Herod Agrippa. And within a short space of time, Nero was on the throne. And he began persecutions of Christians, all because they loved the Lord Jesus. And if you go there today, you can see how they wrote on the walls down in those mines, Vita, 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 life, 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 because they loved the Lord Jesus. 
And if you were to look at those great people who gave their lives during Nero's persecution, you'd say, what a picture of love that is, that they were willing to give their lives for Jesus like that. But then, before very long, other persecutions arose. And if you, if you were to see all of the martyrs of today, you would see that in the last century, more people have died for their faith in the Lord Jesus in the last century than the whole of previous church history put together. What a picture of love, selfless sacrifice. People like C.T. Studd went to the Far East and to the Sudan because he loved the Lord Jesus. And then you think of more modern missionaries, like those five martyred missionaries in Africa in 19, in the early 1950s. They'd spent years preparing to take the gospel to the Warani tribe. They landed their little aircraft on the banks of the Kurarai River one Sunday morning, and before they had an opportunity to share the gospel with anybody, they were speared to death. What a picture of love. But John says, if you were to add together John's love, those who died during the great persecutions under the Caesars, those who've given their lives down the centuries, those who in modern, the modern missionary movement have given their lives for Christ, and to bring, if, you were, if it was possible to bring all their love together, he would still say that's not a true picture of love. And if you add your love to that list, you might not think it's very great, but your commitment to him, whether it's in giving your life or in the Christian service that you do, add your love to it, John would still say that's not a true picture of love. This is love, not that we loved God. There's always a reason why we should love. We love him because he first loved us. Now John goes on to say, here is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. If you want a true picture of love, it is not found by looking at us and how much we love him. It's by how much he loved us and gave himself for us. See, there's always a reason why we should love him. As I said, we love him because he first loved us. But when you ask, why should he love us? You say, well, I don't know why he should love us. The Apostle Paul stretches out that great panorama of Christian experience. And he says, uh, those he justified, he also called. And those who were called were also predestined. And those who were predestined were also loved. And then you say, but why does he love me? You have to say, I don't know. There's no reason why he should love me. He just loves me. It's the same with Moses. Moses in the Old Testament and the children of Israel when he was leading them. It's an amazing story there. And he says on one occasion to the people, God did not choose you because you were great, because you were powerful. He set his love upon you because he loved you. And if you ask, why did God love them? There is no answer. He loved them because he loved them. He loves you because he loves you. That's what a true, true love is. It springs from the Lord himself when there is no reason why he should love us. So John says, here is love, not that we loved him, but that he loved us. But he goes further than that. He goes on to say, and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Here he tells us what love actually does. What did he do? He sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. In other words, there came a time when three o'clock one afternoon, when Jesus was on that cross, hanging there because of the cruelty of men, but hanging there to bear our sins in his body on the tree. The Apostle Peter tells us, he bore my sin in his body on the tree. Your sin was placed upon him. My sin was placed upon him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his, sac his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You know, the thing about us is that uh, we all know that we want love. And we all know that there are things that get in the way of really being loved. 
And one of the things that gets in the way of really being loved is the thing that separates us from the person who loves us that we want to love in return. And as far as God is concerned, there's something that comes between us. Our sin separates us from God. As Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, your sin has separated you and your God. But when the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world, he bore my sin in his body on the tree so that my sin might be dealt with. And the, the, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus on the cross was the atoning sacrifice. Put me back in touch with God because he bore my, my sin in his body on the tree and took away my sin. So John says, here is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his sacrifice as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. One day, they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day, they nailed him to die on the tree, suffering angry, anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins. My Redeemer is he. Where do you find a true picture of love? You won't find it by looking at yourself. You won't find it by looking at other people. You won't find it even in the most godly Christians that you know. You find it by looking at what the Father did in sending his Son to be the Saviour of the world. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. May God bless you today.